haven't seen that. Trying to drive through there at like three thirty in the afternoon. That's when that was her first yeah. These are all um, that's when they normally had it. Everybody ready to go, and then well, Jerry can just that's what join us. Okay. You're you supported by the documentation, not reality. Now call to order the December 7th, 2017 meeting of the City of Nashville Planning Board. Uh, Secretary, can we have the roll call, please? Yes, Mayor Donches. Mike Peterson. Present. Adam Varley. Here. Scott LeClaire. Here. Ed Weber. Here. Uh, Alderman Sean McGinnis, Alderman Thomas Lopez, Steve Ducrane, Dan Kelly, here, David Robbins, Jerry Rupucci, Maggie Harper, here. Thank you, and um, <coughs> we do have uh, regular members absent, so Ms. Harper will be participating and voting this evening. Uh, Next up, approval of the minutes for the November, November 7th, November 2nd, 2017 meetings. We have minutes in the packet. Let's see. I guess these were carried over. Yeah, yeah that should be yeah. from the previous package. Previous package, all right. Does anyone have any questions or comments on the minutes? Happy to take a motion. So moved. Motion by Mr. Kelly to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Peterson. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Abstention, yep. Yeah. Passes, one abstention from Mr. McClaren. Communications, good evening, Roger. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the Planning Board. If you turn your packet, I'll quickly go through a few items the board received after the packet was mailed out. Uh, you have one case on tonight, which is case number two. Uh, you have a communication dated December 7th from Fieldstone. Uh, it's uh, updating the waiver request. Um, Scott has uh, conveniently uh, starred the items in that communication for you. Uh, you've got a communication from the fire department on the same case uh, uh, regarding the emergency access. And lastly, you have, um, on this case anyway, um, you have a communication from engineering um, addressing the concerns uh, that were expressed to you in another communication. And under other business item number three, which is uh, the Amherst Street uh, discontinuance. You have a communication from the city engineer's office um, finding that the discontinuance is acceptable to them. And that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Report of committee and liaison. Mr. Kelly, Mr. Weber, anything to report? <coughs> I have none. Thank you. Okay, I'll now read the procedure for the evening's meeting. After the legal notice of each conditional special use permit, site plan, or subdivision plan is read by the chair, the board will determine if the application is complete and ready for the board to take jurisdiction. The public hearing will begin, at which time the applicant or representative will be given time to present an overview of and description of their project. 
They shall speak to whether or not they agree with the recommended staff stipulations. The board will then have an opportunity to ask relevant follow-up questions of the applicant or staff. The chair will then ask for testimony from the audience. First, anyone wishing to speak in opposition or concern to the plan may speak. Please come forward to the microphone and state your name and address for the record. This will be the time to express your concerns or ask questions you may have <coughs> regarding the plan. Next, testimony will come from anyone wishing to speak in favor of the plan. The applicant will then be given a rebuttal period, at which time they should respond to any concerns raised by prior public testimony. One public member will be allowed to respond to only those items brought forth during the applicant's rebuttal period. After this has been completed, the public hearing will end and the board will resume the public meeting, at which time the board will deliberate and vote on the application before us. We ask that both sides keep their remarks to the subject at hand and to not repeat what has already been said. We want to be fair to everyone and make the best possible decision based on the testimony presented and considering all applicable approval criteria established in the National Revised Ordinances. Thank you for your interest and courteous attention. I ask you please turn off your cell phones at this time. All business conditional special use permits, none. All business subdivision plans, none. All business site plans, case number one, postponed indefinitely. Uh, new business conditional special use permits, none. New business subdivision plans, none. New business site plans, case number two, John J. Flatley, company owner, application and acceptance of proposed site plan to develop a portion of the property into 28 townhouse units with associated site improvements. Property is located at 100 to 300 Innovative Way, Sheet A, Lot 798, Zone Park Industrial and Urban Residence, and this is located in Ward 8. And this case uh, had been postponed from the November 2nd, 2017 meeting. As to case number two, uh, can I have a motion this application is complete and ready for the board to accept jurisdiction? So moved. Uh, second. Motion by Mr. Kelly. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Weber. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, for the record. My name is Chad Brannon. I'm a civil engineer with Fieldstone Land Consultants. <coughs> Our office is uh, located at 206 Elm Street in Milford, New Hampshire. And uh, with me this evening is Kevin Walker from the uh, John J. Flatley Company. We are before you tonight um, seeking to amend site plan approval 2165 <coughs> in order to construct a 28-unit uh, townhouse development within Gateway Hills. The project area is situated on tax map parcel A-798, which consists of roughly 129.7 acres of land and is situated within Gateway Hills, um, also uh, formerly known as the Nashua Technology Park. Currently, Gateway Hills encompasses approximately 400 acres of land and is a mixed-use development with professional office space, research and development space and buildings, um, retail buildings, restaurants, a hotel, and multifamily uh, residential uh, buildings situated within. Gateway Hills is serviced by one public road being Tara Boulevard and three private roads consisting of Innovative Way, Research Drive, and Digital Drive. <clears throat> the proposal for this project consists of constructing a 28-unit townhouse style development between 300 Innovative Way and the existing ski slope. The project is situated on the north side of the access road going to 300 Innovative Way, which will now, um, or is as part of this proposal is going to be named Transistor Road. This development proposes to construct seven three-story, four-unit buildings. 
The individual units will be two bedroom units with a total square footage of approximately 1,750 square feet, which includes a garage space on the first level consisting of approximately 510 square feet. The buildings have been situated along a proposed cul-de-sac road which will um, service the development. The cul-de-sac road is proposed to be constructed at 24 feet in width with bituminous asphalt curbing and will be approximately 419 um, linear feet in length. There will be a communal mailbox situated along the proposed roadway on site and the development um, will be serviced by um, municipal sewer and uh, Penichuk water as well as underground electric and communication um, services. Each unit on site will have two uh, dedicated parking spots, one in the garage and one in the driveway. Those will be tandem parking. Um, they'll be tandem parking. The development will be uh, serviced by sidewalks on both sides of the proposed roadway. And there will be a pedestrian connection alongside of Transistor Road, which will connect to the, which will connect the subject site to the ski area as well as uh, the parking lot for 300 Innovative Way. This project has been designed to provide safe pedestrian and vehicular access, which includes adequate turning movements for daily use as well as emergency response um, vehicles. The connection to um, the municipal sewer system will consist of expanding the sewer system approximately 750 linear feet from Innovative Way um, to the proposed site. And the, the uh, connection to Penichuk's water system will require an extension from the existing hotel within Gateway Hills all the way up to the proposed project, which is approximately a 1,460 linear foot extension. Other improvements on site um, consists of landscaping, lighting, drainage, and utility infrastructure. The lighting plans for this project will consist of installing a blend of pole mounted and building mounted lights. Each unit will have entry lights and the uh, pole mounted lights will consist of nine LED lights along the proposed roadway as depicted on the plans that we have before you this evening. The drainage design for the project consists of collecting and conveying all of the stormwater runoff from all of the improved areas to a stormwater management area just, to, just north of the proposed townhouse units, which is depicted on the grading plan, which is the plan on the left-hand side on the board this evening. So we have the, this is the drainage area is right up in here. <coughs> The stormwater runoff will be routed to this area through a combination of open swales as well as cl closed drainage systems. The stormwater management design consists of a sediment four bay, the construction of a wet pond, and uh, uh, there's also a treatment swell proposed with this project. These practices will address qualitative and quantitative uh, mitigation for this proposal. I will say that the uh, stormwater management components for this project have been designed to meet and exceed not only city standards, but also uh, the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services alteration of terrain standards, as this project will require a permit through that agency as well. There are wetland uh, buffer impacts associated with this project, um, mainly for <coughs> utility extensions and for stormwater mitigation. We did receive a favor favorable review from the Conservation Commission and also a special exception through the uh, Zoning Board of Adjustments for this proposal. This plan that we have before you this evening does contemplate all of the conditions imposed by uh, both of those boards. Over the last uh, few months, we have been working with city staff to address review comments, uh, which have included going before the Fire Department, Engineering Department, um, and also submissions to traffic and health uh, departments. Recently, we have obtained um, a sign off from the fire department for this proposal, and we did uh, address all of the outstanding engineering comments, which I believe there's a communication to that effect in the packet this evening too. 
we have reviewed the staff report uh, for this evening's meeting and we have no issues with any of the staff recommendations or conditions. And uh, we do have a few waivers that we are requesting with this application. Um, so with that, Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to answer any questions that the board may have at this time, or I could certainly go on to the uh, waiver requests that we have. If, if, if you could just very briefly uh, address the waivers. Sure, well, certainly. So the waiver uh, request letter that we have for this application is actually dated December 7th um, today. We made some adjustments to this letter um, to incorporate the um, commun some communications that we received from the fire department. So we are requesting three waivers that are outlined in this uh, memo. <coughs> the first waiver pertains to section 190.279B and it's regarding uh, drafting standards and the plans not being smaller than 50 feet to one inch. Considering the size of this project, and this is a waiver that we've sought on just about every site plan that we've done on this site because ultimately we're dealing with a, you know, a 129 or 130 acre parcel in general, and then you have the surrounding areas that we have to show. So in order to, to depict that on one plan, uh, we have an overall site plan that's prepared at a one inch equals 200 scale. Um, so we are requesting a waiver from this particular section so that we can depict everything on one plan, one overall plan. So given the size of the subject parcel, we respectfully request that the board um, grant a waiver to this particular section. That's the first request. Would you like me to proceed and go through all of these? Or? Yeah, that would okay. be great. And then we um, the second any questions for the end. The second waiver request that we have before you uh, pertains to section 190.211B, design standards and construction specifications of private streets shall be the same as for public streets. We are requesting a waiver from this section to permit the construction of a 24 foot wide paved private road to service the 28 unit townhouse project where a 28 foot wide road is the requirement for public streets. We are also requesting that bituminous concrete curbing be allowed rather than granite curbing. The applicant has extensive experience with, develop, with developing and maintaining this type of multifamily housing um, development and the size of the proposal does not warrant access wider than what is currently proposed. The proposed private road includes a functional turnaround for emergency response vehicles and municipal fire hydrants at the locations um, requested by the fire department. As this board knows, we have done quite a bit of development out at uh, Gateway Hills and for example, the residential apartments um, to the north, Tara Heights, we also used um, bituminous um, asphalt uh, curbing on that project as well and we also had uh, roadway widths of 24 feet in that project. So as I stated before, the, my client is quite familiar um, with the maintenance requirements with this and so um, we believe that it's, that, um, you know, these materials will be suitable for uh, this development. Speaking to the um, 24 foot wide requirement. The site has been designed to allow for two uh, parking spaces per unit, which exceeds the city's maximum of uh, 1.9 spaces per unit for multifamily housing. And there is ample parking available to visitors in the existing parking lots at 300 Innovative Way adjacent to the site. So the existing you know, we don't believe there's a parking issue and we understand through uh, working with the fire department that typically the 28 foot wide road is required to address, you know, a visiting park, visitor parking um, need. We also have added um, signage to the plans to address no part, to, to, uh, to delineate no parking along the proposed roadway. We believe that the proposed road width built to city standards will provide are built to these standards will provide safe access to the development and would be consistent with other developments previously approved in the city. The proposed design is also consistent with the New Hampshire Department of Transportation's suggested minimum design standards for subdivision streets, 
which recommends a 20 foot travel way with two foot shoulders, 24 foot wide total for subdivisions with an average daily traffic of between 50 and 200 vehicles per day. From the proposed trip generation memorandum prepared by VHB for this application, the average daily traffic generated by this use is 163 trips per day. So we fall within that range and uh, therefore supporting a 24 foot wide um, paved road being reasonable for this particular proposal. Again, you know, my letter goes on to state that it's important to point out that the fire department has reviewed and approved of this design um, in that we have and are proposing uh, no parking signage along the proposed roadway. So based on these conditions, we believe a 28 foot wide roadway to service 20, a 28 unit townhouse development would be an excessive requirement as it would create an undesirable setting result in a dis additional disturbance and drainage mitigation and would create an unreasonable financial hardship to my client. So for these reasons, we are requesting that the board um, grant a waiver from section 190 211B allowing a 24 foot wide roadway uh, with bituminous uh, curbing, asphalt curbing. That's the second waiver. Um, the third waiver pertains to section 190-208-E, numbers one and two. Um, E1 requires that dead end or cul-de-sac streets are design, designed to be permanently closed at one end shall not exceed 750 feet in length. And E2 states that the board may grant a waiver on dead end roadway length, on a dead end roadway length if emergency access is provided. We are requesting a waiver from these sections to permit a dead end roadway in excess of 750 feet in length without an emergency access. The proposed roadway servicing this development is approximately 490, or excuse me, 419 linear feet in length, which falls under the 750 foot dead end roadway requirement. The unique circumstances of this project is that the new roadway takes access off from um, the access to 300 Innovative Way, which is also a dead end, dead end road, thereby making the total dead end road length into the project over 750 feet. The measurement from the intersection of 300, or uh, from Innovative Way, um, which, is, which is over here, Innovative Way and the access to, to th uh, 300 Innovative Way is right here. So the distance from here to our proposed uh, roadway is 575 feet. And again, the distance from, of our roadway from this point all the way into the cul-de-sac is approximately 419 feet, making the total dead end length 994 feet. We have reviewed this design with the fire department and they are comfortable uh, with this particular layout and proposal. The fire department's agreement in support of this project, in support of this dead end roadway exceeding 750 feet is a function of the fact that this project has a um, adequate water supply. Um, the units are relatively small uh, footprints and the uh, buildings will all be fully sprinklered. And th that is addressed in their letter or their email. Um, I believe it's dated November 8th. What my client has agreed to is one of the conditions pertaining to the um, emergency access component is should the uh, ski area, which is located in this location here, ever be redeveloped into any type of a residential or commercial use, uh, my client has agreed to, to put a connection to the townhouse uh, development at that time. Um, so again, we do have the support and sign off from the uh, fire department relative to the design that we have before you this evening. And this do design does meet all um, life safety issues. So for these reasons, we believe that granting this waiver will not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulations and we believe that a denial of this waiver would create a hardship 
for my client as it would not afford him the right to reasonably develop the subject property. And for those reasons, we are asking the board to grant a waiver to that, to uh, section, sections, excuse me, 190-208-E1 and 2. So those are the waivers that we have before you for this application. Thank you. Questions from the board? Mr. O'Clair? Uh, just a, a couple of things on the waiver. Um, <clears throat> so the waiver for this, city street standards you're only asking for the waiver with respect to the curbs and the width right that's it the, con the base and construction the rest of it is that's correct yeah, the depth so the only material those and everything two else. criteria in the standards that's that's correct okay and um okay then i um can you expl explain just the parking for the the ski area there, like how does that work? Where does the parking, like when people visit the ski area, where do they currently park? How's that? Sure, I can go yeah. over that. Um, yeah. It's just that when we presented the site plan for the ski area, so this is the ski area here. Yeah. There's a, there's a crosswalk right near the entrance to the ski area. Mm -hmm. There's some handicapped parking on the south side of uh, what is going to be transistor road but is is currently the access to 300 innovative way yeah. so there's handicapped parking there and then there's a stairway that goes up to um, the innovate the uh, parking lot for 300 innovative way which is a very substantial parking lot right. in that location there so that's where the parking is for the C for can the you ski show way. us on this map yeah sure please um so on the, <laughs> if i can see it yeah do, do you mind you if can i come approach up and come show on us. Up. Yeah, yeah. that'd be easier have the microphone on. Yeah. <laughs> So the, this is the uh, ski slope here, you know, obviously the townhouse development here. Um, so you can see on this plan, um, this is the kind of the ticket booth for the, the ski area. Right. Um, and then there's a crosswalk located right here. Mm -hmm. And then um, handicap parking on the uh, south side of, of the, this roadway. And then there's a, this shows a path going up to uh, the parking lot but actually what they built a stairway in this location here so it goes directly to the parking area okay. so this is the entire parking area that um, could be used for the, the ski area and I've I've yet to see that parking at 50 percent you know use I mean that's a parking lot. right yeah oh. how many spots are in that lot um the big one oh it's like a lot. I, it's, <laughs> there's a lot Hundreds, of parking you know, spots yeah. yeah yeah I don't have yeah to, I, I guess my reason for asking the question is just you know it's not going to become convenience for the people that are going to the ski area to try and park on you know around the units <laughs> on that road it's going to be closer for them to, to walk there to the ski area from you know if so these even guys wanted to use the, the ski well, area I'm thinking maybe? people visiting the ski area and they you know they get up there and they look oh there's a road I can park on over by these units so you said you're gonna have signage and yeah stuff there's, like that, that's, but that would be policed for sure and I I know they currently police parking on site and right um, you know there's not gonna be there's not gonna be any you know uh, ski area consumers that are allowed to utilize any parking of that on the, along that roadway or, or certainly in the driveways for the how about on transistor road is that signed no parking on it that is as well? okay. it is yeah uh, what's the shoulder condition like is it look favorable for parking at the moment um, well the night we're actually proposing to construct a sidewalk on Okay, so on that side, so that's going to kind of eliminate, you know, the, yeah. any parking potential. But they yeah. did put, you know, no parking signage, and there actually is some large boulders that they've placed kind of along the road to control any um, parking through there, too. And obviously they have yeah. employees, you know, company employees that, that run the ski area and have the ability to police that as well because it's very visible. Okay. All right. Do tow people at Terra, Terra Heights. Yeah, so. yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, so are you proposing or not proposing a pedestrian walkway directly from that end of the, of the lot to the housing development? Yeah, like up there. What we're proposing is the sidewalk. You know, the sidewalk is going to come up along the um, 
proposed roadway that's going to service the townhouse development. And then there's going to be a crosswalk right here. There is. Okay. Yep. And then there's a sidewalk that runs along this side of the, um, you know, the south side of the access road and will tie into um, the stairway okay. and, and ultimately, you know, kind of connect everything. And that is on the, that is on the site plan it is on um, site. here. You can see it here of the sidewalk and then the, cross, oh, the okay. crosswalk here. Yeah. So with regard to the staff reports and stuff, you, you mentioned you were okay with the staff report requirements and, or um, st current proposed stipulations. Um, you've seen the engineering letter from November 14th. I have There's and still I... still a granite curb recommendation on that letter so that's that's like in conflict with what your waiver is well the my my latest communications with the engineering yep. department and i think also the, it was it was sent to staff as well because um, we asked them directly i mean obviously we're requesting a waiver from those requirements right and um, mr ducrane um Ducrin, uh, stated that he can't recommend a waiver from the the standards so right. that's just a my understanding is it's a statement in his letter. So there was really only one outstanding comment which pertained to the uh, velocity of the stormwater runoff through the culverts on site, and we did address um, that comment. The other uh, three, I believe, were just related to, uh, or two maybe, uh, were related to the private road standards waiver and then the curbing. Yeah. And I, I pull the letter up to make sure. But so we are not agreeing to those comments. I guess I was speaking towards um, his latest email communication because we specifically stated uh, and responded to him um, in, a, in a f that fashion. And he got back to us and said, we can't, right. we can't make a recommendation against the, the, um, you know, the city specs. You have to request that waiver before the board. Yeah, okay, thanks. I, I just wanted to point it out so it wasn't getting confused like you accepted something. Sure. Not <laughs> understanding that. I appreciate that. Uh, that's all I have. Mr. Cover? Uh, thank you. Mr. Cover. Um, on one statement you were here, um, would it be possible or even a, uh, might be a good idea as you made a um, walkway stairwell for the ski slope and for people who are going to have uh, visitors and a whole bunch of visitors you are they're going to be using that parking lot would it behoove you to put another stairs directly opposite um, to make it convenient more convenient for visitors to park in that parking lot and then have direct access and they don't have to walk down the stairs and walk all the way across, then walk down the road, which is a, a good distance. <clears throat> the proposal was to utilize the stairway that's already constructed and to try to maintain some of that that uh, vegetation between the parking area, you know, the ski area yeah. and the residential area. So our preference would be to utilize the existing um, existing stairwell that we're we're proposing. But I understand. While you're asking the comment, and we did, we did evaluate that there is more elevation difference directly across from the townhouse project, um, which is why the stairs actually for the ski area are situated where they are. That's where the uh, differential elevation is the least. Oh, okay. Um, so, the preference would be to utilize what what's currently there. Okay. Um, <coughs> currently, um, on your the apartment building that has uh, Putamus uh, uh, si uh, curbing. It, um, my knowledge, and I live in a uh, condominium that had Putamus, and over a few years, the curbing gets destroyed with snow plowing. Um, do you currently have a policy in place that if, the, if it does get damaged, in the new location or in that location that you replace it immediately or is that up to the homeowners to re, uh, go and fit that bill uh, no the homeowners don't I mean I, I'll speak to this and then I'll let Kevin address this if, if I miss anything but uh, the the homeowners the residents within Gateway Hills don't don't pay for any of the improvements there certainly is a maintenance um, schedule that uh, Mr. Fat, Flatley uh, 
um, you know, I guess you could say follows with all of his properties. I mean, I think they're well kept. Um, yes, um, asphalt curbing is more susceptible to damage, you know, from plowing. Um, but we have seen, you know, just in in the industry, we've seen it last 20, you know, 20 plus years if people are, you know, responsible. So I think that, you know, when, when the contracts for plowing come up every year, those are things that he obviously evaluates because they do repairs in the springtime of any of the damage that, uh, that occurs if there is, is repairs that are needed. Um, it's a very large property. Um, there's a lot of maintenance that goes into maintaining, you know, the, the property and it's in an aesthetically please, pleasing in a way, in a way that does function. Um, but I don't know if you want to speak to that. Any no, you're, 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 you answered my question. Okay. Yeah, my concern was um, some places, <coughs> you know, we, may, we built it here. You, if anything goes wrong, you take care of it. And no, they have homeowners up the creek without a paddle. And I, it's important to point out, too, that they have, um, you know, the John J. Flatley Company has offices on site, you know, at this place. So people can go there and, you know, and they're there. They see it all the time. I mean, there's yeah. people out there all the time. Um, you know, the last three or four times I've been on site, I've seen three or four maintenance crews that, you know, that, that are, are from the, the John J. Flatley Company. So I know they're there. The presence is there. It was, uh, no, I, everything you guys touch I've seen is awesome. Okay. You know, you guys do a great job. Um, the mailboxes, are they going to be open to the weather or they're going to be covered so that um, multiple boxes and everything don't get mailboxes that you use a key and open it up? If it's to the weather, it would seem that it would uh, stuff me. Typically, uh, a typical mail kiosk will have a roof that in an in a in an overhang over you know the mailboxes so that people can get to their mail and have it not be damaged. Okay, thank you. Um, and as far as we, I, we probably haven't gone over this, but um, the sewer uh, system, you guys are adding more and more and more. Um, how far away from where you have to make improvements are you? To the sewer system well we've done we've provided flow calculations to you know the engineering department in the past <clears throat> relative to the capacity of the pipes that's a really uh, difficult question to answer because it's ultimately a function of the user you know this yeah. this use is is a pretty low demand you know residential uses um, but depending on what you know commercial you know, or I should say, a tw you know, 28 unit yeah. residential demand. But if, you know, if a different company came in and they had, you know, more of a demand, then those are all things that get evaluated on a project. Oh, okay. You know, <laughs> you know, on project every project, uh, I didn't case want to put by you case. In the hot spot, but <laughs> <laughs> we've made, we've submitted information to the engineering department and they've reviewed it. And, and it's thank you very much. Sure, Mr. Kelly. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Um, is blasting going to be required? No. We didn't hit any ledge in any of the test pits on this site, which was a pleasant surprise. So it's going to be slab construction, or are you going to have a basement? Well, they're, they're garage on the first floor, so it's slab. Okay. Yeah, slab and frost walls. Okay. Secondly, I remain concerned about the traffic conditions you're going to be creating. Uh, I read your notes uh, from the report from VHP, and cr quite frankly, with 28 units and assuming just 28 people, how does the math work? And can you refer me not only to this uh, document that you have, which I understand has a number of segments. I don't understand how you get your numbers. Okay. And secondly, um, I've always been proponent of trying to solve the Spitbrook Road problem, in my opinion, this contributes to it even more. Just trying to find, we didn't prepare the traffic memo, so I'm just trying to find that. No, but that you endorsed it. You paid for it, so I expect you to <laughs> explain it. Sure. So, the traffic for 
this use is kind of it's it's an off peak it, 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 and it's kind of a reverse flow situation so people are coming to work in the morning the residential um, traffic is going to be leaving you know the site so there I think in general you know the the um, trip generation that was done in uh, VHP's VHB's report essentially says this is an off-peak user meaning traffic is always a function of timing and this is going to be you know the, the peaks for this particular use are not going to coincide for you know the the uh, critical movements of uh, spit spit that's an assumption that you guys have made it will be off peak therefore it wouldn't impact the, uh, the traffic problem and it's I an assumption that the traffic engineer has made who is a professional that deals with traffic for sure um, and this was submitted to the traffic um, engineer at the city and it's my understanding that he has signed off on this memo um, and understands the rationale and the logic and the you know the the uh, the expertise and, and judgment that went into it um, could you explain that to me then could you explain to me the criteria you used in, in order to come up with this this number I'm just taking a look at it real quick because sure. like I said I didn't prepare this and frankly I didn't pay for this um, you know Mr. Flatley and in in, in his company You're representing Mr. Flatley, yes we certainly so. are and so the if I may just take a quick moment to uh, take all the time you need thank you I don't know if do you want to address this at all Kevin I think just to, again, Kevin Walker from the John Flatley Company, just to kind of expand on a little bit on what Chad said, and I understand uh, what you're thinking also. People are already in the site if they live there. So in the morning, the impact is traffic going into the site. These people are already in the site, so there's no more additional impact. That's another assumption that I don't buy. Well, there can't be impact on Spitbrook Road if people are leaving. not on Spitbrook Road. They're leaving. Not everybody's going to work on the site that you're building. They're going to be right, leaving but they're going to go someplace. So you've got a group of cars coming in, yep. and you've got a much smaller group of cars, obviously, because it's residential, leaving the site. So they're going in opposite directions. So there's no additional impact. The cars are coming in off of the highway, basically, from uh, the Route 3 side into the site. People are leaving the site. They may Maybe they go left, maybe they go right, but they're not on the same side of the road. They're not... Uh, using the same lanes it's a completely different pattern but the people that are going out are adding to the congestion that's already horrendous on Spitbrook Road can you address that issue sure do not assume I, I, everybody there I can, ad I can address that there. for you the the issues with Spitbrook Road are twofold one in the morning less less so than in the afternoon but in the morning it's traffic heading westbound on Spitbrook towards Gateway Hills. In the afternoon, it is on the eastbound side of Spitbrook Road, leaving Gateway Hills. So these traffic patterns don't coincide at all. So in the morning when cars are leaving, there, is no, there are no issues eastbound on Spitbrook, on Spitbrook Road. Really? And in the afternoon, I'm sorry. Yeah, and in the afternoon, same same thing, except westbound. Okay, so what I'm hearing you say is, there are no problems on Spitbrook Road. Forget about the morning or the afternoon. Well, well no, you, you can't Road you can't forget no about problems. the morning. It's it's very important. The morning, in in the morning, no, there are no problems on Spitbrook Road heading towards the highway. If I'm heading east on Spitbrook Road. Could probably do it with my eyes closed in the morning. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't dare do it in the afternoon. If I'm coming off of the highway heading towards Gateway Hills in the afternoon, probably wouldn't do it with my eyes closed. Probably have a better chance than in the morning because yeah. there's a lot more traffic coming in. My attitude, as you probably now understand, is 
you're going to be asking for um, another building to be built, a research and development facility, adding more people, more congestion. Don't assume that those people live on site. We've got a problem with Spitbrook Road. And is Flatley going to be addressing that soon? So let me, so this is the next part, and I'm glad you asked that. So with something that's a commercial development, I'm with you 100%. It doesn't apply in this case because it's not commercial. Commercial development, depending on the size of it, if it was a 240,000 square foot R&D site, for instance, there would be traffic impact. No doubt about it. I'm not going to question it. I'm not going to argue about it. We've got paperwork that says there's going to be an impact. There'll be improvements done on Spitbrook Road, which we have designed. Um, it's been reviewed by your traffic department. We're also in the midst right now speaking with the New Hampshire DOT uh, about hopefully trying to get a ramp off the northern end of the site to help people get off the site and not impact Spitbrook Road. We're in the process of dealing with VHB, our traffic consultant, as part of the DOT process before they'll even entertain a ramp. <coughs> They want to see what else can be done before we even entertain giving you a ramp. Spitbrook Road improvements are one. The exit ramps, strangely enough, are two. So coming off southbound and northbound out of Massachusetts, both of those ramps would be improved. So Spitbrook Road would be improved. The ramps would be improved. There may be other improvements that we're looking at. I don't want to get into it too much right now because I'm not 100% sure in the design. There might be a little bit more improvement on Spitbrook Road than just in front of the site. After all that's done, then the state would say, yeah, go ahead and put your ramp in. But yes, so the, that's a long story. The short is, the short is we understand there's going to have to be improvements. And we're in the works of putting a whole package together of what those improvements are going to be and there'll be a timeline depending on the density <coughs> of a commercial development that those will have to be done. The traffic department is aware, engineering is aware, we're fully aware, our traffic engineer is aware, um, and that's why we're talking to DOT about um, another access out of the site. Yeah, there's two problems, one getting on, the other is getting off. Looking at it, your property. We're and, and we're looking at it. It's it's a, it's a bit a of a long process, but we are we are looking at that also. Can you give me a sense of when this package is going to be put together? Because you're going to be up. Soon. We hope to be. We hope to talk to DOT about. But the next thing we need to do is go to DOT, and they're going to give us a scope of what they're going to be looking for as far as a ramp design. They're going to say, "Yep." Yeah, you're right, you need a ramp, this is what we're looking for, or ramps, whether it's one in, one out, or, or whatever it might be. Um, be. Before the mid part of next year, we'll be talking to <coughs> DOT, and possibly a lot sooner than that. And are you going to be trying to get into their budget cycle to help you, or That's, are you going to do this yourself? We are hoping to get into their cycle. The, again, this is more VHBs, expertise, but apparently there are, are numerous uh, grants that may be available, um, right. partnerships, whether it's with the state or, or the feds or whatever it might be. Um, but on, right now on the face of it, we're planning on doing as much of it ourselves as, as, as we can. How many acres are left once you've completed this project? Couple hundred, 175 maybe. And what are the plans for those? And, and my real question is, does this off access or access and, and off ramp accommodate whatever you're going to put up there? So, as part of this ramp uh, proposal that we're going to be hopefully running by DOT and getting a scope from them, we had to show a potential build out for the whole shebang, the whole 400 acres, Good. everything Good. to the north. Everything that's left on the south, you know, whether it's R&D or if we do something else there, who knows, or an office building on the opposite side of the R&D. Right. Uh, we've got a small parcel that's north of the hotel. That really wouldn't cause any issue. It's just a small piece. 
Um, but I'm talking full build out. This thing is yeah. loaded with parking, buildings, you name it. Right. And once the analysis gets kind of narrowed down and hammered out as to what will be proposed in the DOT exactly, that may change a little bit. There'll, there'll be a traffic number. It'll be like, you have this many trips. And maybe it's one huge commercial building. Maybe it's some residential and a little commercial, you know. But, but there'll be a number that's, that's going to go with the final study that BHB does. Okay. We're in the baby steps right now, but we're moving on. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, it, it, the, we're, we're, you know, we've known for a couple of years that we're just about at a point, depending on the size of the project and the type of project, that things are going to start have to get moving out there one way or the other. Um, the beauty of doing this with DOT now is instead of just, all we had initially was we're going to do, we're going to widen Spitbrook Road from here to here. Now we've got a bigger picture of the whole site, when things are going to have to get done. Um, maybe a little bit more on Spitbrook Road here, maybe a little less on this section here, you know, add a lane on the ramps, northbound, southbound, um, not to mention the, the highway ramp situation, so. I am pleased as punch that you are addressing that issue now, because I tell you, my 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 sense is that this would, board would not go along with adding more to that property. If I it have, were, uh, and that's okay. Yeah, we're okay. working on it, and I still am looking for an answer on how you came up with the answer you did with it. What are the criteria? Be happy to hear that. And thank you very much, Kevin. The, you're looking for an answer on the how we came up with what yeah. I'm, I'm looking at this for, at the uh, memo prepared by VHB and it appears what they've done is they've used the Institute of Tra Transportation Engineers to come up with um, the peak hour data for the uh, townhouse project and what they've essentially stated is that it's a reverse flow traffic so it offers traffic balance to the intersections um, and, and doesn't lend itself to uh, it lends itself to negligible impacts at any of the intersections for the site. It doesn't say there's zero impacts, but it's negligible because of the size project. And <clears throat> what this report also states is that in the past, the, there was the R&D site that was approved um, that had a certain amount of uh, traffic impacts associated with it. And so what it's doing, it's saying the, you know, the R&D site was going to have this impact, the townhouses has this much, so they're, they're, you know, this project is now coming before the R&D, and it, it's far less of an impact than the R&D site is. And so that's what I see in the conclusion and in the table um, summary on page um, two of uh, the memo dated September 26. Yeah. I can understand that. They, you know, the data that they have was generated from you know standard uh, traffic engineering practices and then they've applied that to the previous studies that they've um, prepared at these intersections essentially stating that there's a negligible impact resulting from this project because a 28 unit development is pretty minor um, and it is a reverse flow condition as uh, Mr. Walker uh, stated and as See, I find it counterintuitive you got 28 <clears throat> units assuming one person per unit and you accommodate only 15 of those people, according to the section of the VHB report. That's but, counterintuitive. But what you have to understand is, and, and w I hear this presentation a lot because I'm not a traffic engineer, so I'm not typically the one giving Nor it. Nor am I. I'm I, just saying it's counterintuitive. It has nothing to do with engineering. Well, it, 28 people, probably 56, because in this day and age, married people both have to work. But I think and that's, your assumptions are wrong. I think that's where, and I don't believe the assumptions are wrong. I actually disagree with you in relative to that okay. because when I look at, just look at where I live, okay, my wife stays home long enough to get the kids on the bus. So she's not contributing to a peak hour traffic, the peak hour traffic. She's leaving at 9 instead of at 7. How the about this? Make the assumption the that both people work. There are no kids. It's only a two-bedroom place. That's Just fine. make that assumption. Now what number would you come up with? Well, the, 
that is accounted for in the traffic data in the Institute of Engineers. It's accounted for. There's, there's a large data plot of this type of use where they take, um, yeah, where they count traffic, you know, during the, the uh, AM and PM peak hours, and they determine how many, you know, you have a 50 unit development, how much traffic is coming through, how does that correlate to the number of units in the development. There's just so many different factors. Some people work different shifts, some people, you know, are, are retired. Is it, that the criteria that gave them that number? It is. They you work at double shifts. There aren't two people in the apartment. What's the criteria? It's a blend. It's from a number of sites. Okay. The, the Institute of Transportation Engineers, and I can't, if I had that book, it's, it's a very, you know, large book, but it says in the beginning of that particular section pertaining to uh, multifamily housing, how many data plots are, you know, they analyzed, and typically it's thousands, thousands, so it's a blend. It's a, it's a good representation okay. of what you would expect on any site. Okay, also, um, I, I heard your story about parking. And, and the design of this, this um, area does not lend itself to being very friendly to visitors. I know you want a 24 foot versus a 28 foot. 28 would give you some parking up there. And I, it, it's my understanding, this is rental property, is that, is that right? It's not, you're not selling this stuff, it's a rental property. You're That's leasing correct. Or it is a rental property, which means there would be, you know, a, a lease agreement, which would state, you know, that there would be no parking on the road yep, and where the visitor parking is and, and but so it's, on. You, it, it's, it's visitor unfriendly. You described up here how far people have to walk. Did you take into account winter? The properties are maintained. No, no, I didn't say about maintenance. I said walking. If I want to, they're having a, a birthday party. Let's assume that that couple had a kid. And they have a birthday party. Where are you going to put these people in the winter? Well, I think this is, you know, this is a conversation that we have a lot. And it's, you know, there, ha there's, there has to be a diversity in housing stock. I mean, you can look anywhere in the city and people don't have a parking lot to park on. It's on street parking. Yeah, but a 28-foot wide road would accommodate for visitors, not 24. I, I, I believe a 24-foot wide road is plenty wide enough for yeah. this development. And I believe it isn't, so, you know, it's a standoff here, sir. Um, now, Mr. Chair, that's enough for me. Let me think a bit. <laughs> Could I just could I just speak on uh, that last point with the the parking? Yes. And I can actually relate to this. Um, I'm sorry. I, I can relate to this. I I live on um, I live on Main Street in Bridgewater, Mass. I've got enough room in my driveway for three, possibly four cars. On the holidays, we'll have 40, 50 people over, and they park about four or five hundred yards down the street in an empty parking lot. Do you have a 24-foot or a 28-foot wide road? Can they park on the street? They cannot park on the street, no. It's Main Street and they cannot park there. There are no breakdown lanes. There's no parking. Okay. And we don't have, and that's an unmaintained parking lot that they need, that we have them go park in. It's an old school. Uh, mm -hmm. And we haven't had any issues. Uh, that aside, the, Mr. Flatley takes brutally good care of his properties. It's always plowed. It's always walkable or drivable. Um, you know, whether you're in a car on, on a hill with a steep slope or you're walking on a steep slope, you're going to be able to do it safely. And that's, that's important to our company. It's important to him. Um, and it's important to keep our residents safe. So. And that's why I'm surprised you're proposing a 24-foot road. I know he's, he's a good developer. He's good for the city. He's, he's good for the workers. But this doesn't make sense to me. It's counterintuitive to me from a traffic point of view, and it's not in line with what I remember John Flatley doing for the city and for these apartments. It just made, the whole project doesn't make sense from those two perspectives. Uh -huh. I mean, just going through the math on it, we've got a 24 versus a 28 foot, foot wide road, so it would be two extra feet on each side. Car's eight feet wide. 
I mean, the extra the extra four feet honestly don't really provide much of much of anything except extra driving area, which is fine, and I don't really have an issue with that. But I guess my point is, you know, an extra an extra two feet on each side, to me, isn't safe to park on. Okay. Well, then let's assume you put all the four feet on one side, parking only on Car one. Cars eight feet wide. You're, you're, then yeah, your car's still I got half in, the car. Your car's still sticking in the, the parking. The hey, look, it, it, it's your development and the accessibility to it, I question. I, and I also question whether or not um, it's going to be a burden to the city eventually because nobody will live there. That, that's all I have to say. I think this is not up to Flatley standards, frankly. <clears throat> Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Peterson. Um, I have a question regarding uh, when I look at the overall site plan, the proposed name for the uh, townhouse road is Storage Drive. Are you, you going to keep that name, Storage Drive? I believe that is the name that was selected, yes. Storage like data storage or storage unit? Data storage. Sounds so industrial, but that's your choice, I presume, but I would pick a prettier name, personally. But minor issue compared to uh, 28 versus 24. I kind of lean towards the 28 because um, when you have company coming over, uh, it sure is nice that your people don't have to walk a long distance uh, to visit your house. I, I think they've heard us on that issue. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm finished. We can discuss it, yeah, <clears throat> for liberations. Did you, anything else, Mr. Peterson? Then? Well, that's it, thank you. I got a question, Mr. Clark. Just, what's the, what's the occupancy rate in the rest of the, the development, residential? Sure. Yeah. The last number I heard, which was probably a few months ago, was between uh, 97 and 99 percent. Okay. So historically, renting has not been an issue. No, it, it's 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 full. The 97 to 99 is typically at 100 within a couple of weeks. If something's empty, it's you turn over more than a couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's the only question I had for application. I had one more. Go ahead. Who's responsible for maintaining the sidewalk where the tenants are walking to the parking lot on the other side of the street? Sure. This is <coughs> it's all private, so it would be oh, you, okay. it would be the the company, John okay. Butler Company. I have a question for staff that the applicant may have to answer something afterwards. So, okay. um, is in. It looks like there's an extension of the overhead utility on Transistor Road by at least a pole or two, um, which I personally think is fine. But does that constitute? Would they need a, wa a, a waiver because a portion of the utilities are overhead, or is it? You know, like there's a piece along along Transistor Road. I mean it. It makes sense. They're they're extending the pole line down the road there, but there's no waiver for. Well, it's not a subdivision, right? Isn't it? That's what I'm asking the question. I just don't want it to be missing a waiver that it needs. That's all. Yeah, you know, I'm not against the way. It looks like it's all underground within the actual cul-de-sac and along that road. But there is some overhead portion on the site plan. That that's the uh, overhead portion on what they now call transistor road or the service road to 300. Yeah. Yeah, and that's an existing service line to that building. And I believe they're tapping off of that for the residential. Yeah. Is that correct? And you're going underground, down yeah, the right. pole? We're, we're proposing yeah. one pole, which is just a drop pole. Right. That, you know, so the, un, the electric would come to that pole, and then mm -hmm. it would service the entire um, townhouse development underground. Right. Yeah, I mean, it totally makes sense to me what's being done. I just don't want it, to get an, halfway through and, like, missing a waiver. Transistor <laughs> Road is an existing road, so we would count that. That's an existing pole and overhead line. Okay. And it's right. not be, that would remain whether this project went forward or not. Right. So okay. So that's the best way of looking at it. If you're proposing overhead in this development, well, then yeah. I'd say yes, they would need a waiver. 
Okay, thanks. That's all I needed. Okay. I think we're all set for now. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak in opposition or concern to the plan? I'm sorry? I said, is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak in opposition or concern to the plan? If so, okay, please come forward. Mm -hmm. If you could state your name and address for the record. Elizabeth Chapitis, 16 Shakespeare Road. Um, I have a different issue, which I've spoken to this committee before. It's regarding blasting, and I have just heard that there is no intention to blast. However, should that change, I understand that there are new blasting regulations coming forward, and I would hope that they would be subject to those new regulations. And that is my question. I'm, I will admit that I'm not aware of the status of the regulations. Roger, do you know? I know the, the fire rescue department's working on some. I don't believe they've gotten to the point where they've been introduced. Once they're introduced, they would have to comply with them. It depends. This has already been applied, so I'm not sure that those would have any effect on this development if, in fact, they ran into uh, an odd pocket of ledge. Um, hopefully they don't, but um, if, if any I'm blasting. sorry. S so, so the short answer is that the, so the regulations may be in sort of the discussion phase, but they have not been finalized yet, so they would likely not apply here. However, there are existing requirements that apply to any blasting that has to be done. Um, so it, the short answer, as I said, is, is likely those new regulations which have not been formally adopted yet would, would probably not apply if blasting were required, although, as the applicant has said, they, they have no reason to think that any blasting would be done here. Well, the plans require no blasting. So I would think that when they come up with the, the request to blast, if one is, if a regulation is already approved, that they would be subject to it. Right, and it sounds like the, the regulations are not approved yet. They're not at that phase. Okay, all right, so I have to work on that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm Marianne Melissi Golia. I reside at 2 Amble Road and I'm the alderman for Ward 8. Um, I'm here to just voice some concerns that have been expressed to me by various constituents. Um, and some of these concerns have been repeated as the meetings have been canceled and rescheduled. So I know they're ongoing concerns. Um, two of the concerns. Mr. Kelly um, addressed, one was the traffic, and um, it, I know what the traffic study says, and I emailed the letter that was received um, in your office to constituents so they could see the numbers and read the explanations. Um, and there is a huge problem on Spitbrook Road, and I think the people who drive Spitbrook Road just want this board to continue to think about the ongoing impact of traffic. Um, and although it's anticipated much of the traffic in the morning is um, office park traffic with more traffic entering than exiting, unfortunately, the problem at Terra and Spitbrook Road is only part of the problem. I think all of us who drive that area know Brook Village Road and Spitbrook, and then when you get to the ramps, both northbound and southbound um, is part of the problem. And so it is a much bigger problem than the flatly traffic, but right now it is what it is, and so many constituents have expressed concerns about what is going to happen because um, probably all of the, even half of the residents living in the townhouses who drive are not going to be working there. So there's just a concern about adding to the already existing con, um, congestion there. 
the blasting concern, um, I was very happy when Mr. Walker told me they did not anticipate blasting, but with utilities being underground, um, I would anticipate that if there is a need to blast because some ledge is encountered, they will be going through the fire marshal as required. Um, and, and if there are new regs, um, they would have to adhere to those. The other concern I've had, um, and, and I followed up with the school department, is that since the first apartments started um, being rented, Bicentennial Elementary especially has seen an increase in the number of students. And so several individuals contacted me regarding um, how further residential development is going to be impacting the um, class size at Bicentennial. And as of October 18th, there are 48 students from the existing apartments who attend Nashua City Public Schools. Six of them are in high school, two of them are in middle school, and 38 of them are in elementary school, which means they're in K through five and attending Bicentennial. The concern that's been raised is that um, we are going to see an increase in the number of families moving into the townhomes because they are two-bedroom townhomes. So again, just to put that on your radar, um, that there is again a concern about the impact on the schools and class sizes at Bicentennial. So um, those are the primary concerns that have been voiced to me, and I thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience wishing to speak in opposition or concern? Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak in favor of the plan? Did the applicant want to speak to those issues that were raised? <coughs> Yeah, uh, just uh, just one issue that came up. Um, we we understand uh, any issues that have to do with students in the school system, and uh, I just want to make sure the board is aware that um, as part of any residential development, like we did with Terra Heights, uh, we're required to uh, pay a school impact fee. Um, in the Terra Heights buildings, I want to say it was around twenty five thousand um, dollars. I think it was twenty-five thousand a building, and we've got thirteen buildings, and all of all of that money is, uh, if there is impact to the schools, that that money can be used um, to make improvements or or that type of uh, that type of action, uh, which we will be doing with this. It's a residential development. We're going to be required to uh, pay the impact fee, uh, which we have no issue doing. Um, Chad Brandon again with Fieldstone Land Consultants. I just uh, <clears throat> wanted to speak just to the test pits in a little more detail. Um, you know, similar to any of the other projects that we've done, we we have performed a number of test pits on this site, so we have a very good understanding of the soils on site, and that consisted of um, 11 test pits on this project, all of which uh, we dug to depths of about 10 feet, and we didn't encounter any ledge. Um, so I just you know, wanted to sh share that detail. I, I don't believe I addressed that in the um, initial presentation. But so in this particular site appears to be, you know, is, is, is uh, um, got some nice uh, free draining soils on it. Uh, certainly on the other side of the wetland complex and on the hill, it was very um, ledgy. So I can appreciate some of the concerns that were raised, but we, we are quite confident that uh, we're not going to encounter any ledge with um, the, this particular townhouse uh, project. Mr. Chairman, now those test pits were designed to look at whether there's ledge on the buildings that you're going to put up, or were they also addressing the issue of underground um, service? Sure, that's a very good question. Well, we we dug probably four or five test pits in the uh, general location of the units, and then we also dug test pits down by um, the drainage basin in the back, which is at a much lower elevation. Um, and that's actually where the sewer line is going to run uh, down in that direction as well. 
Um, so we tried to get a good, um, you know, a good blend of, of test pits in various locations on site, and we didn't hit ledge in any um, location. Now, I mean, practically speaking, I, I can't stand before you and say we're not, we're absolutely not going to hit any um, ledge, but I can speak with some confidence that um, the soil characteristics, you know, in this corner or portion of the project is, is very different than, than where it has been elsewhere. Just would would slab on grade units would would be more likely you'd adjust grading versus blasting for slabs. I mean, right? Yeah. yeah so I mean, you, I mean, what's essentially happening with this site is we're coming down the hill and the road is turning, you know, to the left, right. and we're cutting on the left-hand side, yeah. you know, and taking that material and kind of. Um, transporting it to the downhill side and creating a you know kind of a level area where the units would be um, and you know with a slab on grade the grade technically could be created by a cut but it is a slab and it's a you know a frost wall so you're mm -hmm. looking at you know foundation depths of about five feet, five feet yeah. okay all right thanks okay. thank you Alderman, did you have anything? Did you want to speak to anything with the evidence? I would just um, acknowledge that there are school impact fees. And again, I think that um, in the city of Nashua, the um, class size and crowding of schools is um, a topic that many of us are very well aware of and um, we know about the rentals of portables and how much the city has spent on portables in schools that have been overcrowded um, we know what it's costing us to redo some of our elementary schools and we're looking at redoing um, elm street so uh, i fully appreciate the school impact fees but again there is an impact at bicentennial and there has been growing concern and so i was asked to bring that to your attention so we are aware of what's happening as um, as more families are, are moving into the area thank you thank you any other questions for the applicant okay. could the applicant have anything to add or? I think we're all set. great thank you okay this concludes the hearing on this application. We will now take our deliberations into the public meeting. The board does reserve the right to recall any party for further clarification. Um, so I know we've already talked a lot about traffic, so I'll just... I'll, Excuse me, Adam. Uh, yes. There's just a couple of quick uh, edits on uh, waiver number three. Sure. Uh, the request for a waiver of NRO 190-208, it should say E, 1 and 2, which requires cul-de-sac streets not to exceed 750 feet in length, and the addition of an emergency access lane. And uh, on number 10, uh, it refers to two emails, one for November 1st, 2017, and we should also add the email tonight, November 8th, 2017. Can you repeat that second one you said? Before? Sure, yeah. Uh, that's number 10, prior to the issuance of the first building permit, all comments and two emails from Adam Puglio, Fire Marshal, dated November 1st, 2017 and November 8th, 2017. Great. Okay, we have Shall that. be addressed to the satisfaction. Yep. Okay. And then you can clarify that stipulation number 12 has been yeah, he dealt with. covered that a bit. That yeah, with Penna Chuck and yep. there will be extending the line from the uh, hotel, I believe that that's where it's been taken care of. Okay. But it's there. You probably want to keep it in. Just you know, uh, I'm thinking in terms of just you know. You can leave it in. Okay. Yeah. I, I just. All right. To be thorough. Okay. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. So I just my two cents on traffic. I mean, I, I think we have to consider this project sort of. Within the 
scope of the other development that's being proposed, but also sort of the scope of the, the traffic problem that exists on Spitbrook Road. And I mean, I think the the impact of this particular development is is likely to be very modest when you consider, you know, how many units of housing are, you know, ex, you know, using Spitbrook Road and in, 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 in just in that general area. Um, so I mean, I do think we had, you know, some good detail um, from the applicant about what they would be proposing to do further down the line um, when they're you know, doing more significant further development at the site. But I think with this particular project, I mean, I, I think, you know, with the, the, the information we have from VHB and that having been reviewed by the city traffic engineer, I think, you know, I, I feel pretty confident that the, the traffic impact is not going to be significant here. Um, Mr. Chair, I, I respectfully disagree. I don't think they addressed it adequately. And for that reason, I'm going to vote against this project. Okay. I, I mean, I would just keep in mind that, you know, we have, we have a report that was prepared by a traffic engineer. Um, I understand what you're saying. When we and have, saying and that was reviewed by the city traffic sense. engineer. So I'm just saying, you know, we don't have any expert testimony that would contradict the information that we've been provided um, and you know I for one don't <coughs> feel like I'm in the position to contradict the judgment of the, the third party traffic engineer and the city traffic engineer to say no I, I think there is gonna be significant traffic impact I just think as, as I said just as it, it, from a non engineering perspective is, is you know just a practical matter it seems to me when you when you talk about 28 townhomes versus the thousands of units of housing that are utilizing Spitbrook Road is just not going to have, it's going to have an incremental impact, um, but a fairly small one, I think. I mean, I, I, I just don't see how you, you know, how you get to a different conclusion that this is, this is going to meaningfully change the problem on Spitbrook Road. And, and undoubtedly, you're, there is a traffic problem, um, but I don't think this is, this is going to be you know, a significant change to that existing problem, and it's going to require a different sort of solution than I think the applicant. And you can vote appropriately. I'm just no, telling I, you, it doesn't, it's counterintuitive to me, and you can vote your way. I'm just telling you, I don't agree. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'll give my own experience, and I mean, I drive Spitbrook Road every day, you know, multiple times a day. So, um, in, in my experience, the issues with the majority of the issues with Spitbrook Road traffic are actually from Daniel Webster up to the highway. That side's a disaster, right? And then from um, beyond the Tower Boulevard up to Bicentennial. And, you know, I don't personally get jammed up between Tara and the highway really ever. That part does still flow. And, you know, realistically, that part was designed for the full digital build out when that was there and you know back when the full digital build out was full I mean there was the traffic coming out of that each day like I mean that was all at the same time and that was massive you know um, so I'm not really experiencing personally and I'm just giving my personal opinion I'm not really experiencing any delay in my day-to-day -day traffic from Tara to the highway as soon as I go beyond the highway, it's dead stop, right? On the Daniel Webster side, that side's top, you know? And it also gets pretty bad between Tara and Bicentennial, because it's like a stop sign right there. Um, but I don't generally get in much issue right there at that, <coughs> at Tara. So, so I'm not super concerned about the 28 units in at this point, I mean, Certainly, if we get to the next couple of projects that we've all seen, I mean, we've seen the master plans here, you know, a couple of years ago, whatever, um, and, you know, with a larger commercial development. Um, and really, the occupancy of the, of the three old digital buildings is really doesn't appear to be that high at the moment either. So, um, so I, I'm, not, I'm inclined <laughs> to not be as 
concerned about the traffic on this particular project, you know, at the moment myself. And I, I, I kind of think too that in order to get to the the improvements, we got to get enough sort of development on that site to warrant the rest of the improvements. You know, like we all want to get to the off ramp and we all want to get to the commercial buildings to kind of bump up the, you know, I mean, that's a good thing for the city, but we need, the residential is helping to me support the, the potential development of the, of the commercial side. So, I mean, I feel like it's a means to an end here that is going in the right direction for me anyway. Um, and it, it's pretty consistent with the plan that I've seen for the site over, I mean, I've been on the board for whatever, five years. It, it's always been going in the same direction. It doesn't look like they're diverting to me in a, a different direction than what we've seen um, that I can remember. So I'm, I'm still pretty much in favor of, of what's going on. I mean, the parking thing, I kind of agree with you. I mean, I, I'm not sure, it'd be nice to have some additional parking. I think to me that just is going to be a detractor for a buyer. Um, that's why I was interested in the, in how well they've been able to rent so far. Um, and you know, my guess is if you know if these don't rent well because they can't don't have enough parking area. I mean, there is plenty of site there for them to build some extra parking or something. Um, that's really a renter, you know, real estate issue. I think that. Yeah. Yeah, and I would and uh, I, just yeah. uh, on that particular point about the parking, I, I would note that we approved a project a few months ago, West Hollow Street. There, it's a, a condominium project. Same waiver request for the 24-foot wide road, and you know, the discussion we had there was similarly. You know, this is really it's an issue for the the buyer. You know, to consider and that it was going to be appropriately signed no parking there was going to be i think there might have been three spots per unit there but the difference there was that there was no there was no other parking that was it it was that street it was a you know it was a cul-de-sac like this um, but it was off of, you know west house so there was no there was no other parking um and, and again i think the conclusion we came to was you know you know people are just going to have to adjust their expectations if people are looking you know, at renting or buying a property, um, and it's apparent that, you know, there's either limited parking or in this case, substantial additional parking, but that it's, a, you know, a bit of a walk away. I mean, I think that's just something that people have to consider when they're, when they're renting the apartment. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah. Um, and you know, the class size thing is, um, this is a good point. I'm glad people are bringing that up. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, my own opinion though on, on sort of school funding and stuff is again, it's tied to tax base, right? And this whole parcel is is definitely increasing the tax base in, in Nashua in a positive way. I mean, it, it's private roads. It's not like, you know, I mean, there's gotta be more money flowing into the city from this site than going out. I th to me, it seems like the more we can develop this site, the, the better it is for the we city. We don't know how much it's going to cost for the egress and access. That's a big bill. So I disagree with you yeah. when you start sending more is coming in than going out. Well, I mean, I, on, this, on the school point in particular, I mean, I, I don't know what the, what the population is at, at Bicentennial right now, but I know that in this uh, citywide, the school population is actually declining, not increasing. You know, Main Dunstable, where my kids go, it's been declining for the last several years, and that's the general trend in Nashua and in the state of New Hampshire. I mean, the population's aging, um, so to me, if we're doing things to attract younger families with children, that's that's a good thing long term for Nashua and for the state. Um, and you know, that's not to say that we don't need to be mindful of. <coughs> You know the impact on particular schools, the impact on the school system, you know, in its entirety, you know, for the longer term. Um, but as you said, Scott, I mean, I think, you know, in increasing the property base is is a good way to you know to improve the funding situation for for you know the entire school district. So. 
Yeah, I mean, I think we know. I mean, we've all seen the maps of Nashua. There's not a lot of more, a lot more area to really develop. I mean, we're That's right. we're getting pretty close to the end of the end of the road here with regard to. I mean, this this plot's been on obviously everyone's size for a while, but it's not many others. This is kind of one of the last few for housing, anyway. My thoughts. Anybody else? Uh, can I ask Mr. Walsh a couple questions? Is it too late for that? Uh, we have to reopen, I think. Yeah, yeah. we'd have to reopen. But we can. We can reopen, yeah. If we need to. Just for a minute. Okay. Yeah. So, does, well, does someone want to make a motion? Uh, do, do you want to ask the questions first, and then we can then we can talk yeah, about exactly. make them? Okay. Well, I I just wanted to ask how many residents currently live at Terra Heights, in total. And just we'll hold off for a second we'll until we yeah. yeah. And yeah. Um, and what's the largest style unit you have there? Uh, the number of bedrooms. I'm just curious. Okay. So. Yeah. I make a motion to uh, open the public uh, hearing um, to ask a couple more questions of the applicant for that limited purpose. Right? For these purposes, yes, yeah. is there a second to that motion? I'll second that. Second by Mr. Kelly. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Again, Kevin Walker from the Toronto Family Company. Uh, right now, in the entire Terra Heights development, there are 564 units. Uh, there are 384 in what we call Terra Heights 2, and there's initially a 180 units in what was uh, initially submitted as Terra Heights. The uh, most most number of bedrooms, the entire uh, development is two. It's uh, it's a mix between one and two. Um, don't have the percentage. I, I want to say it's close to 50 50. Uh, one bedroom, two bedroom. Okay. Thank does you. That, does that answer everything? Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. just trying to figure out what percentage of your residents are school aged children. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Good. Yeah. All right. This concludes the, the hearing on this application. We'll now take your deliberations into the public meeting again. Uh, the board does preserve the right to recall any party for further clarification. No other questions? Dan, you think your, your biggest concerns are just the, that kind of traffic coming and coming and coming kind of thing along that way? I mean, there are a couple of concerns. Yeah. Yeah. One of them is hear it out. they are looking at Spitbrook Road, and you have yeah. already identified the problem isn't necessarily there. Right. What comes out has to go somewhere. Yeah. It's adding to the burden of our traffic problem, and nobody seems to be addressing it. Right. If we're going to be taking a look at an R&D center, which is going to have a massive impact on yeah. traffic, yeah. I think we need to address the issue now. And I would even go so far as to say when the R&D issue comes up, make one of the caveats that unless the traffic problem is resolved, it's not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, I think that's reasonable. 28 right? units. Yeah. The, the second point I want to yeah. make is that I'm not a traffic engineer either, yeah. but it's counterintuitive when you have 28 units and you're only counting 15 people. Well, remember, that's 15 in an hour, though, right? 15 that's trips. Right? In an hour. Not, not 15 like at peak look, at morning, yeah. afternoon. Yeah. yeah, at peak, yeah. In yeah. this day and age, both the husband and the wife oh, yeah. have to work and yeah. probably and I'm making an assumption that they will go out at about the same time let's say within a 15 minute window depending on where they have to go to work this this the assumptions they made and the criteria they used are confusing to me yeah and for that reason I'm gonna vote no yeah, yeah I mean I think they're using regular you know yeah but the, I want to know numbers. the criteria that yeah. they come that they yeah. use to come up with these answers well, I, I don't think it's the applicant that's coming up no, with it. No, they're using, like, civil engineering. It's, it's the kind of, state yeah. or like it's not a, It's not a person issue, folks. Yeah. No. They hired a company to give them an answer. I want to know what that company used for their criteria to provide the answers that they agreed to. 
Right. right. But I think I think they. I think he, Chad, did identify the the source that they're relying on for the data that they're using to support their conclusions. Yeah, and I'll tell you how many. I don't know how many sections there are to what they've identified, but you can pick any section of these documents to justify what you want to do. That's why I keep asking, what was the criteria used to come up with this? So I, traffic is my thing. I, I think we're way beyond waiting for the DOT and for Flatley and for the city and everybody else to come up with some answers. Yeah. Put a budget together. You better start looking at public-private partnership, ways to solve our problem. Right. And it's not happening fast enough for me. This, in my opinion, is the start of saying no. Yeah. Until you come up with some answers, no. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you obviously are not going to fund a, uh, you know, Spirit Book Road improvements off a 28-unit. It's all, bigger than that. I mean, the, the whole of South of Nashua right. needs to be addressed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not suggesting that. Yeah. So, but I don't disagree with you when the, you know, the larger you know, potential R&D commercial development. But I think that's that's the time to do it, you know, that's part of that. It's got to be. You know how long it takes to get on the, yeah. on the traffic list to get money to repair anything? Yeah. This, this should have happened six, seven years ago, just so we could be talking about it in realistic terms today. Right. We're just now beginning to look at the problem today. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, anybody have any questions or concerns on the waiver? <laughs> no. no. Yeah. Which waiver are you talking about? Any of the three. Oh. Yeah, I don't personally. Well, I have a question about that. In, in number two, when we talk about the design standards for private streets, yeah. encased in that, are, is that the difference between 24 feet and 28 feet? Is that right. included in this so waiver? The, the two so only portions of that that they're requesting the waiver from, and, and Scott did confirm this, it's the width, the street width, and the curbing. So it's, they're not going to okay. use granite curbing. Okay. Two Thank items. you. Grant the waiver. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'll make a motion. Uh, I'd like Sir to make Clark? a motion in, uh, I think, are we still on new business number two? Yes. Right. New business number two site plan, owner John J. Flatley Company amendment to NR 2165 uh, for 28-unit townhouse development on 200 innovative wave. I'd like to make the motion um, that this uh, plan does meet the requirements in NRO section 190-146D and that there be... Um, 14 stipulations as um, for those stipulations the first uh, first one being the request of waiver for um, a request for a waiver of NRO section 190-279B be read as is granted and will not be contrary the second waiver of NRO 190-211B be read as is granted and will not be contrary and uh, you know appended at the end of it to that the um, the waived criteria being the street width and the curb material only um, waiver number three being of for NRO section 190-208 e section one and two um, and that be is grant uh, in that that be read which requires cul-de-sac streets not to exceed 750 feet in length and a, um, this waiver also include the addition the addition that there is no requirement for an emergency access road and that be is granted and will not be contrary um, stipulations four through ten would be as written in the staff report um, stipulation eleven uh, I think that needs to be amended to be read the letter from Steve Dukren on November 14th um, in lieu of the October letter. And 12 through 14 as written in the staff report. So 
A motion by Mr. Leclerc to approve, approve new business number two, finding that it does meet the requirements outlined in NRO section 190 140 d with a total of 14 stipulations. The first three being waiver request, all reading is granted, will not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulation. And then the remaining stipulations as written in the staff report with the amendments indicated by Mr. Leclerc. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Second by Mr. Peterson. Is there any further discussion? Uh, just checking with the staff that that letter, the date change that I made on. Yeah, yeah. That's I don't correct. know how that got through because it was changed to November 14th. Right. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, stipulation 10. That was November 1st, 2017, and November 8th, 2017. We have that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. So what happened? There's six of us, so five to one. Motion passes. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> New Business Sites Plans, case number three, that has been postponed to the March 29, 2018 meeting. Other business, case number one, review of tentative agenda to determine proposals of regional impact. I didn't actually see it. I don't know if there is one. Yeah, I didn't see that either. Roger, do we have a, anything there? I oh, thought okay. you would have had one somewhere. But is it attached to your original staff report? That's what I was working for. The tech review. Hmm. Yeah. It should be I, that, but. I, I don't recall anything being on it with that would uh, cause regional impact. No, yeah. I don't see it. No, the uh, I think we just push it with the rough on McDonald's. Yeah, and, uh, November 2nd. Uh -huh. Okay, there you go. All right, Vlad, then you can make the motion. Extension. Read it first. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be here all night. You got it. What does it say? No airports on there, right? <laughs> nope. I find nothing in it. Okay. Motion by Mr. Weber that having reviewed the agenda, there are no proposals of regional impact. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Kelly. Is there any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Good to keep everything. <laughs> Other business case number two. Nomination committee for NCPB officers for the 2018 calendar year. Um, so typically we've not really had a committee so much as just an individual who reaches out to everyone by email and says, who do you want to nominate for officers? Um, I would just say um, for everyone, I, I, and I've already talked to Scott about this, I asked if he would be um, willing to, um, to serve as chair for this coming year, um, subject obviously to nomination and election, um, just to, to have a, a little bit of a change. Um, I know I've been doing it for a little while, and I, I feel like it's good for the board to have some, some movement in the officer positions and not have the same person serve as chair, just indefinitely. Um, but I did indicate that that if you know assuming everyone's in agreement that i would continue on happy to be continue on as vice chair and then you know fill in um you know in scott's absence he's you know not able to attend um so i just ask everyone to keep that in mind when you're considering nominations so uh with that uh i designate mr weber the nomination committee this year. Oh, yay, congratulations. <laughs> I'll second that. <laughs> Where'd that come from? <laughs> second, so uh, motion for Mr. Weber to serve as the nomination committee, second by Mr. Clare. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion passes. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, big pay increase. <laughs> yes, that's right. Doubles. Who seconded it? I did. I did. Or, yeah, it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You have all the emails, right? That you can yeah. I'll get them from staff anyway. Bill? All right. Um, other business case number three. Referral from the Board of Aldermen proposed petition for street discontinuance. A portion of Amherst Street formerly utilized as part of the jug handle, which is reconfigured into a full signalized intersection. Um, and I know, so we have. <coughs> Bless, Bless you. We have a letter right here. Yeah, we have. Uh, 
Yeah. Yes. So we have we have the submission from the Board of Aldermen, and then we also have a letter. Um, and you have a map on the reverse yeah, side of that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. So. And then you also have a communication in your packet as well. Yes. If you like, I could go over it sure. briefly, Mr. Chair. Sure. Um, there was a small area uh, as part of the southern jug handle for the recent traffic improvements that were just done in front of Whole Foods and Aldi's. And then the southern jug, ha jug handle was eliminated. And there was a small piece, roughly 6,800 uh, square feet. Uh, when they came in before the board, uh, they discussed having that discontinued so they could, that's really a part of their entryway. It's not a part of the street system anymore. That's where their uh, throat to go into their shopping center is located now. And they also have their uh, freestanding sign in that area too. They got an encumbrance permit from the Board of Public Works for that area with the intent of coming back and squaring away the, the discontinuance at a future date. Well, we're at that future date because the construction is done down there, and I think it works really well. We've heard nothing but compliments about the exit seven traffic flow these days, which is vastly improved. And this is just really a cleanup of that. Um, city ordinance requires the city engineer to give comments uh, to this board uh, before you act on it. You do have uh, that information in a memo from um, Mark Jennings in the city engineer's department uh, that finds the petition is acceptable to them. Uh, I know they have been working with the applicant um, and uh, staff would recommend a, a, a favorable recommendation on this uh, street discontinuance. Thank you, Roger. Um, it seems pretty straightforward and I certainly don't have any concerns about it. Does anyone have any questions, concerns? Dan doesn't have any. <laughs> you just make a motion? Yeah, just so we make a motion for a favorable recommendation, I guess. Yeah, or a, um, so you're still a recommendation for approval. I guess that's what it would be, right? Well, it's it's just a, it's a referral from the Board of Aldermen, so I don't think we're actually it's looking we're not on the board like a finger and a recommendation for approval. So. Yeah. The board actually will sign uh, the form that goes to the Board of Aldermen, yeah. and yeah, it's, it's it is actually a recommendation for approval. It's a recommendation, yeah. It is a recommendation for approval. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay, I'd make a motion that we uh, recommend approval of this petition for the street discontinuance. Motion by Mr. LeClaire to uh, recommend approval of the petition. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Kelly. Is there any further discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Discussion items? And uh, I can't even remember what you do. Well, it's, um, I have one discussion. Don't, don't we usually do a uh, Martha's trip around this time of year <laughs> for the board? <laughs> A what? I'm off. <laughs> Don't Highly in favor. Of I know Jerry was planning it like a month ago. Yeah. <laughs> we could, we could, yep. I don't know. We like, could are try we to pick out? a date. You didn't hear that? Huh? No, I didn't. <laughs> oh. We could try to pick a date. I mean, it could even be after the a get together date. Oh, well, get together the, date. Yeah. I mean, or do people want? I mean, when's our next? Yeah. Meet? When's our when's our next oh, meet? Yeah, what's our meet? Question. January, the first of the January. I guess. Uh, oh, I, I think it's the twelfth. Um, the eleventh. Yeah. Is eleven. Okay. Right here. January 11th. 11th. I, I got that one. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So do we do you want to do it in conjunction with that or do we want to do a different Depends date? on how heavy the agenda is. Yeah, right. Agenda. How late is the meeting? <laughs> have you seen the agenda for that yet? No. We don't have one right no. now. It doesn't look too full uh, based on what we've received. A couple items. Yeah. Two items. Yeah. But okay. it depends on, you know, we had one. We had one in this. <laughs> <That's tonight. laughs> yeah, that obviously depends what the items well, are. Well, I mean, we can do a different thing. Is place. one of them McDonald's? McDonald's, yeah. Okay, so that could, I don't know what response you'll get on that one. Northeastern. A new Boulevard. McDonald's? No, it's oh, no, the existing no, it's, it's, one on be McDonald's. Northeastern Boulevard, uh, so. Oh, yeah. And there was a lot of 
neighborhood uh, yeah. concerns. So we could pick a different day. Yeah. I'm up for any day. <laughs> for people around. I'm for that night too, though. Yeah, I mean, I, we, it's certainly it's, in some ways it's just easier because we're all together anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, take a shot at. Want to just tentatively plan, and if it turns out that it's a yeah, super long and meeting, we did we'll Mark Martha's yeah. the exchange is awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's easy to get to. Walk in, have a few drinks, little appetizers. Prior to that, somebody has to go down, get our little room, start ordering up some appetizer, give them a heads up of what we want. Yeah. And I'd be happy to do that once we pick a date. Okay. Let's go for the eleventh. Plan on that? And January December 11th? Yeah. January 11th. January 11th. Yeah. January 11th. Yeah. January 11th. Yeah. January 11th. <laughs> yeah. That will be a Thursday. You're yep. the only one that can <laughs> It is. It is. Okay. It's on this it night. It is. The night that you come here. Always, <laughs> right. always a Thursday. <laughs> so post meeting? Yes. Because right. the calendar here is if 2017. If we do pre meeting, we may not make <laughs> it to the meeting. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. There'll be no form. Everything form. will pass. All right. Okay. So tentatively, um, social get together on January 11th, correct? Correct. correct. And I'll, I'll make reservations over there. Excellent. Great. I'm going to write it in my uh, calendar here. All right. Okay. Mr. Kelly, would you like to do the honors? Mr. Chairman, I move that we adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I second it. Seconded. And uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It passes and we are adjourned at 8.51. Is there a second for Anderson? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'll clean the list here. You can't take them down.